driving is while running, if it gets up in RPM, smooth. Purrs like a kitten. If I put it down to idle anywhere from 800 to 1200 RPM, uh, really rough, shaking idle. Uh, and I have cleaned the carburetor, I would say, five times now. I've completely gone through, adjusted the float, made sure everything's clear, everything's airtight, both on the intake and all of the gaskets on the carburetor are solid. I have no leaks whatsoever. Carburetor, brand new, LCE intake. Um, uh, so that was fine. And then I jumped over to thinking, okay, maybe it was my valves. Turns out valves are fine. They're all perfectly in spec and adjusted. Okay, then I jumped over to something's wrong with the ignition, my distributor, uh, for the rough idle. So all new um, cap rotor plugs, wires, and an actual all new distributor. And my advance works great. Uh, and it's in spec when I pull it, rev it up of where it should be adjusted of the spring. Uh, and then checking voltage, I turned out it turned out to be that I had a bad voltage regulator. So uh, went to the store, uh, got a new regulator. Or actually, before the regulator, it was the alternator. I uh, was like, okay, I got a bad alternator. I'm only getting 12 volts at the battery when idling. Changed out the alternator and then I had 18 volts at the battery quickly shut it off and turned out to be the voltage regulator price 80 um, once the that was changed still had the rough idle um, so now I'm at the point where or what the real issue that's going on that I've been hunting down is every time I put a timing light on it no matter where I put the distributor, even if I pull it and move it a tooth, which I've done that very carefully about 20 times now to make sure I'm not skipping an extra tooth, is I can't get my TDC to zero with a light. It only goes to eight, and it's either too far or too advanced if I skip a tooth on the distributor. So, uh, after a lot of research um, on forums, I was given the advice that maybe the harmonic balancer is bad. Harmonic balancer is not bad. It is fine. It is at 12 degrees. All my timing marks line up fine. And then now, my next go-to, and what I've been avoiding, is I'm thinking that the timing chain has skipped a tooth. So I'm at the point now where we, I need to just take everything off the front and redo the timing chain and make sure everything is perfectly at 12 degrees when at TDC. Which I've done and my mark lined up, but I'm not sure if my where the um, notch in the cam lobe lines up. The only other thing that I could suspect is because this one has a dual row timing chain. I'm going to guess that whoever did it is off a tooth. Alright, so this is where we're at. I didn't want to have to do this, but let's talk about this for a second. I. suspected something was wrong. I took off the timing, uh, the I checked timing and everything seemed fine but the cam gear was reversed and I was like hmm that's odd but it should be the same because the dowel pin lines up and it was straight up and down and same with that being straight up and down. So timing should have been solid. When I uh, put more thought into it, I guess. If the teeth, or the tooth, the dot actually isn't at 12 o'clock when you're looking straight at the motor. It's actually off just a little bit. It's like at, I don't know, you know, 11, or 12.59 um, is where the dot lines up when everything is straight up and down. And so, I thought about that, and if that cam gear was backwards, then in essence the dot would have been a tooth off this way. Alright, took the head out. Forgot about the little hose right here. That flips around and connects to the bottom of the uh, intake. 
So that was fun. I left the intake on when I pulled the head off. Um, head gasket, of course, was ripped on this front half, so that's where it was leaking, either right here or on the other side. And I've noticed, you can kind of see here, it looks like the valve made contact with that piston. This one's the worst. I looked at all the others, and they're not too bad. But then when I looked at the head, the valves are fine. Like they made no contact, they're not bent, and they're all sealed up. So, it must have been sometime in the past, someone set the timing wrong, or a timing chain broke. I don't know. And then it got replaced. Maybe that was the issue of why the cam was on backwards. They, someone changed the head or the valves or something. Anywho, well, now it's waiting for parts and get a new gasket and put it all back together. Alright, let's catch up to speed. About five tries later, I got the timing correct because the cam gear was backwards. Because timing marks, it's off. It's not 12 and 12, which the lobe is, but where the dot is on the cam gear is about like 11.59. So the cam gear, whoever was in here before, put it on backwards. So it was actually at 12.01. So I could never get timing right. I couldn't get it on zero. It would either be 8 degrees advanced or past zero by like 10 degrees. Finally figured that out. We got our time. We got a brand new timing chain. We got a brand new fuel pump. We got a brand new voltage regulator. We got the right kilo wiggles going to the battery. We got a battery tray that's wrong and way too big. We got a freshly rebuilt 3632 Weber carburetor. We got a couple flat spots on our cam lobes so she's running uh, not the bestest but pretty dang good new timing cover because I broke the last one when I was putting the bolt down uh, on the top here that's pretty much it in there uh, and then exhaust where are we at with the exhaust let's take a look exhaust is routed from the headers back I got this cat here not you. Non-California cat. I didn't read that in the eBay when I bought it. Took it to the smog shop and he looked at it and said, heck no. And then did some crazy welding up in here and got this sweet, super loud, straight magna flow, boom tube, whatever, out the back. The issue I'm having is this clamp ain't holding it. It keeps sliding out and coming off the hanger in the back or this one. You can see it. Anyways, there's a hanger right there. Right there. Yeah. So this keeps sliding out. Uh, so i got to weld that up in the meantime just so I can get around. Freshly rebuilt gears and bearings and gaskets. Freshly rebuilt and painted uh, bearings and gaskets and some sweet red paint. Yep. And what do we got? We got some new freshly rebuilt uh, painted hubs, the videos on that, and the brakes, the bigger brake upgrade. Uh, I got the uh, the old Bluetooth front drive line uh, because the gearing in here, I believe, is 410s. Uh, I haven't pulled it out yet to look. And then in the back, uh, when I got this truck, it was bad, so it was the old Bluetooth on the pinion, it wasn't even there. So I robbed this out of like a 96 Forerunner, this rear end. So that is the next to get changed to OEM 410s. And then fix the old drive shaft, weld up the old exhaust through the cat. Living in California sucks. Uh, gotta do the battery tray. Gotta get a sweet battery. And drive line. The reason the drive line is still Bluetooth. Can you hear that? It's missing the little springer with the pin for the ball. I might just call Tom Woods. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? We got some uh, wireless Bluetooth speakers, some really loud aluminum door cards. The window is off its track, so when you're driving, it just rattles like crazy. Uh, I finally found my boot. That was a hard one to find. So next, I think, is exhaust. 
a cover if we could find this for the steering wheel. This is the tilt, of course. Oh, here. And so let's see, exhaust cover, fix the windows, uh, the cat so we can get this thing smogged, hopefully. And my steering box is leaking a little bit that I put in. And I got a video on that too, if you want to watch that one. Uh, new alternators. Um, and all new gaskets. I had to do the head gasket because I ripped the other one when I was doing the timing cover and that was a pain in the butt. So I don't want to do that again. Battery tray. Bezel. Uh, steering box gears. Door cards. And a radio.